What do screenwriters need to know about timelines? Yeah, I mean, I think that there's definitely, um, it's worth paying attention to the timeline of your story because there's a certain flow that when you're reading a script, if that, if the, if the sort of flow of logic or our sense of how much time is passing in the story, if that is off or, you know, unclear, that can be disorienting and can make reading it confusing. So definitely worth paying attention to. Um, it's, it's not a problem I see that often, but occasionally it does come up where I can't figure out, so if this event happened then, how much time has passed, you know? So um, I think that goes to clarity, which is one thing that you're always striving for in your script is conveying as clearly as possible exactly what, you know, exactly what the story is, what's happening, so that we can understand kind of the, the you know, the journey that you're taking us on. Yeah, I think it's hard too when there's like, they're jumping back and forth in someone's memory or they're, they're showing different people's realities. And so mm -hmm. that timeline becomes blurred, but yeah. I'm not sure the best way to convey that. Um, are you, are you working the, different timelines into your librarian story? Uh, we could, we could try that. Yeah. Okay. So if we were going to use that, <laughs> I know people are going to be like, okay, move on with the librarian. But if we, let's suppose we wanted the librarian to think back to growing up and maybe the perfect boy that her parents wanted her to marry and she just didn't want that. She wanted somebody that had more edges around them. Mm -hmm. So she kind of, maybe he was like the local business owner's son. He was like the perfect guy on paper, but there was nothing there for her. Yeah. And then she remembers like the bad kid and having a crush on this guy. Mm -hmm. And so that takes her back now to being 35 and working in this, you know, city library and she's regarded amongst her peers, but she still has something for this yeah. sort of rough around the edges writer who's a little bitter yeah. and arms crossed and challenges her, but she likes that. Yeah. Well, I have a couple of thoughts about this story. <laughs> okay, so, um, no, so I think it's great. So, um, so I would say you're, um, you are sort of talking about flashbacks, right? Which is a, which right. is a topic worth talking about. Um, I think that flashbacks you can use. I know a lot of people say, don't use flashbacks. They're, you know, outlawed or whatever. You can totally use flashbacks if we need that information to understand the story that we're watching in the present time. You know what I mean? Um, if it gives me context that I need in order to appreciate, understand, feel whatever the story is that you're telling me right now, then I think it's valid. Um, I would say in that case, I don't necessarily need to know that she had a crush on a bad boy in her childhood in order to understand the attraction to the bad boy today, right? Because I think that's a pretty common thing, pretty common trope for romances, right? That women like bad boys. So I would say because everyone already gets that, you don't have to explain it to us by saying she had this past that where she had a crush on a bad boy. Um, also, just in general, I would say with romance stories, um, try to keep just one love interest unless you have, unless they're directly competing, right? And so you have like a sort of a love triangle or something like that, um, which is very common as well. But if, if we're introduced to someone else that she was in love with, and then now we're supposed to invest in her being in love with this person, that can get a little bit muddy and sort of divide our our loyalties, like who do we want her to be with, right? Which is exactly the the effect that you want with a love triangle. But in this instance, I, you're not, you're not talking about a love triangle. You're talking about a, a backstory that is informing her um, romantic ideal today. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I was just thinking. So that wouldn't really be a competing timeline. That's more just just a memory, yeah. like a flashback sequence. Right. Okay. I mean, I think that um, there there definitely are stories that maybe could be told in parallel timelines, right? And if we're going to take the librarian example one step further, so maybe there is a um, maybe there is a timeline of when she was ten years old, and I I don't know. Actually, I don't think there is. But okay, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say in some stories there are parallel timelines, or you know, uh, two different sort of stories that are happening in different timelines. I'm um, trying to think, like The Hours, I think, was one. Okay, right. right. Do you uh -huh. remember that movie? Yeah. Um, it was like three different timelines sure. in one story. And so they chose to do that. I guess the, the point that I'm making is they chose um, 
to tell the story across different timelines for a deliberate effect. So that really is the goal before you make any um, sort of style or structural choices is understanding what is the effect that you're trying to have on the audience. Um, and so then how do I achieve that effect, right? So if I'm trying to um, draw out some mystery about why she's in love with this guy, then maybe I want another, you know, a series of flashbacks alluding to some, you know, romance that she had years and years ago or something like that. Maybe that could be effective. But but the point being that um, I would I would only make that choice knowing that I want to have this effect on the audience. I want them to be curious about how did this woman get to be this way? And so then that's the effect that I would be trying to achieve with those flashbacks. Does that make sense? It does, okay. yeah. <laughs> so maybe she remembers going to the dance with the good guy and then she saw the bad boy smoking outside mm -hmm. and he makes, like, he makes like a snide comment to her, but there's part of like this, he's also like fishing at the same time. And so she kind of remembers you mm. know, Tommy in his tux or whatever. You I don't know. know. <laughs> <laughs> I will say the danger of that, and this is this again goes back to clarity, which is um, you have to understand what your audience is going to see when they see that flashback. Are they going to know that that's a different bad boy than the one you're presenting us with? today, right? So we might be watching it and going like, oh, they've met before. She she actually had a crush on him when she was a teenager, right? And that could change how we understand your story. Um, it could also just confuse us and That's true. make us yeah. wonder like, what, what is it with this woman and yeah. this guy? I don't know <laughs> right. what's happening with them. So yeah. That's a good point. So maybe that's too much backstory. Could be. Yeah, yeah it could be. Also, mm -hmm. also, I will say, if you if you are writing that story and you want to put that backstory in, could be something that you don't need a flashback for, and you can just get in through you know conversation or something like that. Ah, okay, maybe like um, having drinks with an old college friend or something. Right. Something said. Right. Because it feels like that piece of information is fairly small. So is it worth stopping the story, flashing back to a completely different time, a completely different cast of characters, except your protagonist, just to let us know that she sort of always had a thing for bad boys, you know? That's something that you can probably get out in, you know, a line of dialogue. Sure, sure. Like a bartender walks by and she <laughs> says like, you know, I'll take a martini from him or so. I don't know. That's, that's way too cliche. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> 